Sometimes Krishna smeared cow dung all over himself. <laughs> what a way to start. <clears throat> Seeing it as musk covering his body, the Vrajavasis enjoyed a festival of beauty. How can there be any inebriety in the one who is beauty personified? At other times, Yasoda tied a very attractive turban on Krishna's head and dressed him in gorgeous yellow garments. After marking his body with tilak, the color of Garochana, she would anoint his lotus eyes with soft cudgel. Adopting the mood of an ordinary mother, Yasoda placed her saliva on Krishna's forehead to prevent people from casting an evil eye on her son, whose sublime elegance enchants the entire creation. While playing in the courtyards of the gopis, Krishna often wore a necklace of tiger nails set in gold and a waist belt bedecked with costly jewels. Once the Vraja Gopis talked amongst themselves, Krishna brings good fortune wherever he goes, and his presence makes everyone's life glorious. Who in this world is not enchanted by the frivolous, amusing childhood pastimes of Krishna? Who cannot appreciate these mirthful activities? Rather than getting upset, they felt the greatest happiness when, whenever Krishna broke their clay pots and stole their butter. Still, the housewives of Vrindavan pretended to be angry and complained to Yasoda about Krishna's stealing in a mixed mood of love and laughter. The gopis warned Yasoda, O queen of Vrindavan, Yasoda, in the future, you will suffer for the mischievous acts of your son. Although now your son is like a young sprout with tender leaves, already he is disrupting the whole creation. But be careful. In the future, when this tender sprout grows into a tree full of leaves and branches, he will bring you tremendous despair. Now your boy's adventures are just beginning, but by nature they are forever expanding. Your son's naughty behavior will soon destroy our own village. We have no idea what mischief he will do next. Before our cows have been milked, your son unties the calves and makes them drink all the milk. If someone tries to rebuke him, he simply smiles sweetly, and that person immediately forgets all his anger. If we keep our butter in a dark storeroom, he uses his natural effulgence to easily find and steal it. But instead of eating it himself, he takes great pleasure in feeding it to the monkeys. When the monkeys reach their full fill and are unable to eat more, Krishna breaks the pots and throws the butter on the ground. He catches the butter pots which are beyond his reach by stacking many small tables on top of each other, climbing them and extending his arm to grab the pots. Krishna is always stealing. Krishna is always stealing our butter and yogurt. If someone tries to stop him, he immediately drops the food on the ground and quickly escapes. If by chance a housewife captures him, Krishna twists her wrist and runs away. Then from a safe distance he yells, Hey, just stay where you are. If you come any closer, I will make you even more trouble by teasing your babies and making them cry. If someone calls, Hey, thief, stop! Krishna becomes angry and shouts, 
you are the thief. This house is mine. And everything in this house belongs to me. In the morning, we spread a fresh layer of clay on the outer walls of our houses and paint them beautiful designs on top of it with powdered limestone. Then your son Krishna comes along to spoil everything by throwing dirt all over our houses. In front of you, Krishna is so quiet and well-behaved, but when he enters our homes and acts frivolous, frivolously, frivolously, steals our food, speaks sharp words, and becomes angry and greedy. In this way, the ladies of Vrindavan, pretending to be angry, made many complaints against Krishna. But in reality, Krishna's joyous pranks filled everyone with pleasure. When accused by the gopis, Krishna feigned innocence and shed false tears. Though culpable for his immoral acts of stealing and offending the villagers in various ways, Krishna tried to minimize his misdeeds by speaking very sweetly. Responding to the charges of the gopis, Krishna said, Mother, none of these ladies have any affection in their hearts. They are not speaking a single word of truth. Actually, they are all liars. They have given up their human dignity. When I see them or their sons, I feel completely happy because of the natural affection I have for them. I regularly visit their homes every morning at sunrise. Ma, so knowing my motives, you can easily understand they are deliberately telling lies. You should not believe them at all. Mother, since you are my worshipable superior, from now on I will not visit my friends anymore. Saying this, Krishna sobbed and cried. Vrajeshri Yasoda put Krishna on her lap and, smiling, and smiled shyly at the gopis in order to conceal her real mood. Then just to please Krishna, Yasoda said, You gopis are all telling lies. Only Krishna is telling the truth. He's just an innocent boy. So how could he possibly do such things? I think you have already scolded my son sufficiently. After saying this, Yasoda spoke affectionately with the gopis. Then, as a friendly gesture, Rohini applied tilak to their foreheads and sent them home. After the departure of the gopis, Yasoda, who is expert in the laws of etiquette, spoke to Krishna. My son, because of greed you performed many improper acts in the homes of our friends. Although in your own home, such behavior is acceptable. In the home of another, it is totally unbecoming. Oh, beautiful one. These deeds of yours... What does that mean? My son... After the departure of the gopis, Yasoda, who is expert in the laws of etiquette, spoke to Krishna. My son, because of greed, you performed many improper acts in the homes of our friends. Although in your own home such behavior is acceptable, in the home of another it is totally unbecoming. O beautiful one, those deeds of yours were not good at all. From now on, just stay here and play. After instructing her son, Yasoda caressed him lovingly. Just then, Rajaraj Nanda arrived and brightened the room with his favorable feelings. Nanda spoke pleasing words to encourage and pacify his charming son. Oh, Vatsa, come sit on my lap. Leaving Yasoda's lap, Krishna climbed up on Nanda's lap and wrapped his, ar his arm around his father's neck. Then Krishna said softly, Why is mother chastising me for nothing? Nanda responded, What is this all about? That fabulous boy of oceanic intelligence replied, Mother, now tell truthfully what happened. Then Mother Jasoda recounted the misdeeds of Krishna by repeating the words uttered by the gopis. 
pointing to Queen Yasoda, Rajaraj Nanda said, My son is faultless. He has not done anything wrong. I always see him behaving nicely. By siding with those who made fun of him and with those who showed envy towards my jewel-like son, you have wrongly accused my well-behaved son, and so you should be punished. Concealing his real mood behind these words, Nanda rebuked Yasoda and comforted his son. Oh, my darling son, just stay in my lap and do not go to anyone else. Though hearing his father's words, Krishna immediately jumped off his lap, just like an unpredictable child, and quickly climbed on Yasoda's lap. Seeing this gave both parents a hearty laugh. Krishna plays in the village. One day, Vrajaraj Nanda and Yasoda spoke about their son, the vanquisher of many demons. When Krishna is out playing, he likes to wander off alone, leaving the powerful Balaram behind. We should hire someone to supervise their play and send some expert servants to accompany them. Let them wander all over Vrindavan serving our two boys. Shortly later, Nanda engaged some servants to take care of his boys. Every morning after leaving their respective houses, the cowherd boys came to the home of Krishna and Balaram. The meeting of Krishna and Balaram with their friends and servants looked like a king meeting his ministers and advisors. As a baby elephant picks up dirt with his trunk and throws it all around, Krishna entered the open fields of the village and playfully covered himself and, and his friends with Vrajaraj, dust of Vrindavan. At this time, Krishna used to sport with both young boys and girls of the same age. Sometimes Krishna quarreled with the gopas and gopis and beat them, and other times they beat him. Krishna responded by laughing, getting angry, or by not reacting at all. Playing in the dirt, Krishna built houses, a toy wall, or a small town. Other times he broke the dirt houses of his friends, and they broke his. When Krishna rebuilt his house, they would break it again. While curiously observing these antics from the sky, the demigods thought, simply by, by his glance, thousands of unlimited universes come into existence and then again are dissolved. Instead of bothering with that work, he now plays in the dirt making roads, homes and villages. Although he is becoming exhausted from doing this, he does not give it up. Krishna's perplexing pastimes captivated the minds of the demigods. While Krishna delighted in the dirt, he looked like the sun shining in the sky. The housewives of Vrindavan, full of motherly affection, addressed Krishna with sweet words. Oh, darling boy, please come to our beautiful courtyards. Play with our children and take some food. Hearing this, Krishna smiled and replied, replied softly, I cannot come because I do not have any spare time. I do not have any spare time. I'm too busy. <laughs> Thus the all-attractive beloved of every mother's heart cleverly responded to the elderly gopis. Anxious to express their motherly affection towards Krishna, these impatient gopis held his hand and hurried to their homes. In their eyes, fortune had blessed Krishna alone as the sole recipient of matchless beauty. Brimming with love, the elderly gopis served Krishna by rubbing his body and bathing him. With great devotion, they fed, fed him butter, rubbery, and kheer, 
and then sent him home. Krishna eats clay. One day Krishna ate some clay in order to expand the glories of his beloved land of Vrindavan and to purify the universe. Upon seeing that, Balaram, who possesses keen powers of discrimination, and a group of cowherd boys ran to tell Mother Jasoda, Mother, Krishna cannot control his mind. Out of greed, he just ate some clay. Despite our rebukes, he just keeps eating more and more. On hearing such harsh words about her son, Mother Jasoda felt disturbed. Her eyebrows raised in anger. She grabbed a bundle of sticks and quickly ran out of the house. Finding Krishna, she said, Hey, you naughty boy, why did you eat clay? Didn't I give you enough sweets? Who can enjoy eating clay? Just as we caught you before doing mischief in other homes, now we caught you again. Don't you realize that you cannot hide your faults? Your elder brother and friends are always there to witness all your misbehavior. In fear of his mother, Krishna tried to conceal his faults. Though performing many mischievous deeds, he pre pretended to be completely innocent and poured profuse tears from his lotus eyes. In order to counteract the charges, Krishna said emphatically, Mother, I did not eat any clay. They are lying. If you do not believe me, then just look in my mouth. Prajeshri or Soda replied, All right, open your mouth. Krishna, the embodiment of unlimited power and the abode of good fortune, smiled and opened his lotus mouth. Mother Yasoda saw Buloka and the seven islands amidst limitless oceans. Buloka extended for a great distance with varieties of human beings and roaring ro rivers along its edges. Both small and large forests covered its surface. Trees wrapped with flowering creepers blowing in the wind spread in all directions. Lions and many types of animals inhabited its huge mountain, its huge mountain chains. She saw the lower planetary systems, including Nagaloka and the Nagapatni serving their master. She saw the heavens complete with stars, planets, constellations, and the passing of the days. She saw the abodes of the celestial populated by Siddhas, celestials, populated by Siddhas, Charanas, Gandhavas, and Vidyadharas, Munis such as Marichi, Atri, and other famous sages beautified that realm with their radiant auras. Beyond that, Yasoda saw Mahaloka, Tapaloka, and other universes as well. Countless living entities from the insignificant insects up to the demigods like Indra and Brahma inhabited those regions. Within Krishna's mouth, Yasoda also saw herself, Nanda Maharaj, Vrajadam, and her son, Nanda Nandana. Upon marveling at these sights, Mother Jasoda said, What am I seeing? Am I dreaming? Is it the illusory energy? Is it a shadow of magic? Am I under a hypnotic spell? This pastime put Yasoda into complete bewilderment. But after a moment, the wise Yasoda thought, Indeed, this must have been a display of Krishna's limitless power and opulence. Forgetting all these ideas, Yasoda tried to find out what had happened. Regardless of what she had seen, Yasoda felt that Krishna must protect her. Upon seeing that amazing universal form, Mother Yasoda concluded that her son was a most extraordinary personality. She thought Mahadev himself must be astounded by the majesty and influence of my son. Certainly Krishna must be the supreme controller. Although Krishna revealed himself as the supreme controller, 
due to the influence of Yoga Maya, Mother Yasoda continued to treat him as her dependent son. In order to expedite the free exchange of sweet, intimate love between himself and his dear devotees, Krishna quickly abandoned his mood as the absolute supreme controller. End of chapter 5.